God's House, better known as the Buxton United Methodist Church in Chicopee, Maine. Um, please join in the call to worship. We gather on a day like any other day. We, we gather, gather on, on a day, day unlike any other day. Come, brothers and sisters in Christ, touch and feel and taste and smell the sacred of this day. For this is the day which our Creator God has made. Let us rejoice and be oh so glad in it. And please join in the unison prayer on your bulletin. As we prepare for his second coming in power and glory, enable us to become the people you want us to be. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might become more holy, more godly, more at peace with you as we live for you in your world. Amen. And please join in the two verses of Morning Has Broken that is also on your bulletin. It's wonderful to be with you all, and I want to thank Arlene Ganya for doing our sermon and our message for us today, as well as Sharon Elwell for doing special music and helping as liturgist, candle lighter, acolyte, whatever she, we needed, and of course, our Linda for the beautiful music. Our first scripture comes from the 12th chapter of Exodus, uh, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the first month, the first month of your year, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to, to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, 
It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. And our gospel lesson this morning is taken from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
wonderful job, Sharon. I'm going to start off with a scripture, and I can remember it when I was young hearing it. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I say it is so, I will come and gather you to me. Tonight's, or today's sermon is Be Prepared. When we think of the Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts, and our Girl Scouts that are and have been among our church family, we must think of their motto, which is Be Prepared. I think it can mean that we are to be ready. Imagine if, let's say, last year on July 1st, we were told to be prepared, prepared for what was going to be coming our way, such as what we had to go through with the repairing of our church, that we would be welcomed into two other buildings so that we could continue to worship, living waters for our church service, and Grove Hill Church for our Bible study. We then prepared to re-enter our church, and two short weeks later, we were hit with a pandemic which no one had seen in over 100 years. Would we have prepared anything differently? I think of other people who didn't have the Lord's strength and don't have it like we do to, that is carrying us through. Growing up, it seemed like we were always attempting to be prepared. We cut and stacked the winter wood. We planned and then planted the summer garden. We planned for the harvest. And on some of the hottest days, my grandmother would ask for our help to start the canning in her summer kitchen. It was hard on those days to remember that when on the coldest days in the winter, we could go into the root cellar and choose a, guy, a jar of her canned corn and use it to make a scrumptious corn chowder. We were so lucky that we had then prepared for that winter dinner. Education prepares us for our future vocations and Sunday school prepare us for our life to come. Example, singing songs like the wise man who built his house on the rock and it stood firm. We learned that reading God's word about how God would be watching over us at all times through our lives. We learned the golden rule about treating others like we would want to be treated. In these different times, we certainly need to remember the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, and the Lord's Prayer. Today's Old Testament scripture spoke about the Hebrews who were being prepared to leave Egypt so that they could journey to the promised land with gifts of milk and honey. Many plagues happened before the Passover came upon them. The angel of death flew above all homes, but passed over the homes that had the blood of the young animals smeared on their doorposts. The Hebrews would have to stand on their feet eat unleavened bread as they didn't have the time to wait for the yeast to cause the bread to rise. They never took their sandals off as they had to be able to march on at a minute's notice as the Egyptians, when it came right down to it, wouldn't want their Hebrew slaves to ever leave them. The New Testament scripture tells us about the foolish and wise bridesmaids who are told to take their lamps with enough oil in them to carry them through while they are waiting for the special bridegroom to appear. Well, we all know the story. The wise bridesmaids came prepared with extra oil and the foolish, foolish bridesmaids did not. When the foolish bridesmaids ran, lamps ran low on oil, they went and they begged the wise bridesmaids to share what oil they had. But if the wise bridesmaids had done this, they too would have run out of oil as well. Why did Jesus speak of this parable? It was to help the people in the crowds to know that they too had to be prepared as they wouldn't know when the last days were upon them, when there would be the second coming of Christ. Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is his bride. I remember when I was in the fifth grade in Mrs. Chase's class, she would often instruct us to work on our math papers, and she would say she was going to the office for a short time, but she would be right back. She had no more left the room, and Jonathan Jewett and Billy Foster, and they're both in heaven now, would go to the door to watch for her, and paper airplanes would stop flying around the room. Everyone would stop talking and laughing. 
all except the one girl named Vivian, who faithfully sat in her seat during her math problems. You see, she wasn't afraid of Mrs. Chase's return, and she was prepared for it, but we really weren't. I wanted to share a riddle with you. A young boy said to his father, there were three frogs sitting on a big rock, and one of them decided to jump. Then how many frogs were off on the rock? And his father answered, well, two, of course. The boy began to laugh and laugh. He said to his father, there were still three frogs on the rock. He had only decided to jump, but he hadn't actually jumped. This shows us that we should be prepared at any time to make that final jump when our Lord comes. One more story. There was a talented young photographer in the Midwest. He was asked to film a fire in Yellowstone National Park so that he could film the heart of the crisis for the cover story of a national magazine. When the young man started to film, he wasn't prepared for the smoke being so dark and thick and that it was too hard to film pictures on the ground. The young man called into the magazine office and asked to speak to the supervisor who said that he had permission to charter a small plane. He arrived at the airport and jumped into the plane that was all warmed up. A young man was sitting in the pilot seat of the small single engine aircraft and it was fueled and ready for takeoff. The young photographer put his bag in the back and shouted, hit it. The young man proceeded down the runway and the plane was shaking and very rough. When in the air, the pilot asked, how was that? The young pilot seemed very nervous as the plane lifted higher and higher and shook even higher into the wind. The young, talented photographer had not experienced ever such a jerky flight before, but he requested the pilot to fly over the park and to fly real low over the fire. Why, asked the young pilot, would you ever want me to do that? You see, because I am a photographer and I'm on an important assignment and I have to be close to the action to get good photographs. The pilot was very quiet for a few minutes and then he broke the silence saying, I thought you were my assigned flight instructor. I am assuming they both got back safely, hopefully. In some ways, they were both somewhat prepared, but they still needed to work on it. I'm going to share a familiar poem with you. It changes what we're used to, but it fits in with this. A prayer called, Are You Ready? Twas the night before Jesus came, and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not even, not in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care, in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, but they never kneeled or they never bowed their head. And mom and her walker, with baby on her lap, was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east there came such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, shutters and threw up the sash. And what to my wondering I should appear, but angels proclaiming that our Jesus was here, with a light like the sun sending and shining forth a bright ray, I knew in a moment this must be his day. The light of his face made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning just like he had said. And though I possess worldly wisdom and wealth, I cry my sorrow in spite of myself. And the book of life which he held in his hand was written the name of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he searched for him by name when he said it's not here. My head hung in shame. The people whose names had been written with love, he gathered to take them to his father above. With those who were ready, he rose without a sound, while all the rest of us were left standing on the ground. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I had waited too long and then sealed my own fate. I stood and I cried as they rose out of sight, oh, only if I had been ready tonight. In the words of this poem, this meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing very near. There's only one life, and when he comes the last call, 
we'll find that the Bible was true after all. Well, the final question, how do we become prepared? Number one, we must be available at all times. We must keep our eyes to the sky, watching for him. Number two, we must be ready for when he comes. We must be able to be obtained, used, and reached. Number three, we must be ready for whatever may come to us in life, such as the trials, tribulations, problems, obstacles, and temptations we have made and have had to face. Be dressed for the action, remembering God's word at all times. Number five, wait for his return by keeping our eyes, ears, and hearts for him, open to faith, perseverance, and courage. Are we ready and prepared for the coming of the groom? Or are there still things that hinder us from giving our lives completely over to our Christ Almighty? Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the prayer. Dear Lord, we await your promise of your coming to gather us, to bring us to our heavenly home. Your word states there will be people in the fields and in the mills working, and you will take the ones who have stated that you are the Lord, and the others will be left behind. We are waiting for your sounding trumpet, and we will remain prepared. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Forgive us. Oops, I'm sorry. It's okay. Give us the same. Say our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's a little hot. <laughs> and uh, now is the time when we be sharing our gifts from our hearts. Um, and we'll say we thank you for what you have selfish, unselfishly given us. And we are giving you from our hearts to continue the sharing of your word. Amen. And the final hymn and the two verses, Shall We Gather at the River? Church family, as we go into this new week, 
we carry them in our hearts 